Hello and welcome back to another installment of Pokey Potter. The first thing that I want to go over today is we have the maintenance announcement complete and it was kind of bizarre because when, <laughs> when I log back in, it says the team match event is here, but there's nothing there. And so I'm kind of confused as to what that is. Oh wait, something popped up. I don't know why this came back up. It says update 425. But um, the team match event is over. So that was kind of bizarre. But what I want to go over is the pre-tournament is here. People, mostly in Europe, are all in a tizzy because of the time that this pre-tournament is. And the pre-tournament is from 2 UTC until 3.59 UTC. And I can't tell you how many times I get the question of, is that AM or PM? And honestly, I thought only, I thought really only America used AM and PM. I thought the rest of the world was on what I would call military time or a 24 hour clock. So two to 3.59, going by military clock, two to 3.59, there's only one of those. In the States, I'm like, well, is it AM or PM? But with this game, and as far as UTC goes, I just assume that everything is in military time where zero is midnight and 2459 is 1159 in the evening. So hopefully that clears everything up <clears throat> as far as when this event is. And I don't know, I don't know my, I don't know the map. Like I am not a geography major in any way, shape or form. I have no concept of where other countries are in the world or how far away they are from Los Angeles. If I'm not mistaken, 2 UTC is 7 p.m. Los Angeles. And the thing is, is when you have a game that is a global game, no matter when they decide to host some kind of a, an event, it is going to be the middle of night or not an ideal time for somebody in the world. And for this particular pre-event, Europe is the one that's kind of, it seems like Europe is the one that, that's kind of left in the dark on this. And I anticipate that they will have different events at all different times to satisfy people all over the globe. And if when the actual tournaments come out, if the pattern becomes they're only played at the same time and it always excludes a particular section of the globe, then I think it's worth getting in an uproar about. But for a pre-tournament, I, I, I think it, it's kind of just people complaining just to be complaining. Along those same lines, people are complaining about the rewards and you're going to be gifted um, UX rare metal rare or rare metal and a UX ingot, and people are complaining about that. And my stance on that is, if they're giving you free stuff, what are you complaining about? Like even one Carmenite, that is one more Carmenite than you had before. And even if you're, like I can't even remember who it is on my Discord who has 11,000 ingots saved up, that's 11,001 ingots now, or a uh, uh, Carmenite. So free is free. I, I don't, I personally don't understand the obsession with complaining over getting something for free even if you think it's worthless it's still free if you don't want it don't sign up for the tournament but what i want to go over is how exactly do you sign up for this tournament on your screen if you will notice over here on the left hand side i will try to kind of like circle around it but it says tournament that's in the same place where if there was a gym going on that the gym would be and then what you're going to do is you're gonna go click on register. I kind of like this fella here that, that is right next to the, the banner. He looks pretty evil. And um, there you go. You click register and that is how you register. The tournament starts in five hours from now. It is two o'clock in Los Angeles right now. So that does mean seven o'clock. Other than that, I have no idea what really 
to expect here. I do wish that they would just put everything up here in this tab. I know it might make it a little bit more difficult for some people to find, but it kind of makes sense that if you're gonna put the Queen's Cup up there and things of that nature, just put everything up there. I don't care if that banner goes all the way across the screen. You could even drop down this locked booster a little bit if you want. But that is how you sign up for the tournaments. I have no idea what to expect. I have no idea what to run. And that kind of leads me into today's video of, I have no idea what to play anymore. And here's the thing is, I hear a lot of people on my Discord complaining that Ultra Beast stacks are broken. And, and, and then they'll, they'll go into a little more detail and say, well, not Ultra Beast decks. Those are actually really cool with their synergy. It's Celesteela that's broken. And I'm like, okay, like, I get it. It doesn't seem any more broken than any deck that has a Banish element to it, especially if you're not running a figure to bring back yours, um, like a Call Signal or a Nebby or a Mega Ampharos. If you're not running any of those, it seems no different than any other Banish deck that's out there to me. And that is my honest opinion. It doesn't seem broken, more so than I've said from the get-go that banishing figures is a terrible, ter terrible element to this game and a bad mechanic. Celesteela is just that, except for this time it's blue. And it's like a 24 wheel slice. So, I mean, like one out of four chances and it's gonna remove the, your figure as well the opponent's figure as well and so you know then they're gonna have to roll blue to bring it back now so let's uh, uh Formosa Feromosa and Nihiligo have really big blues to bring it back but there's counterplay to that Rowlet is not great but Rowlet won't allow them like they flat out cannot roll callback on Rowlet they flat out cannot roll callback on Terrakion uh, is it is it Flaffy? That they flat out, they don't have a blue attack. So there are counterplays to it. And anybody who even wants to make the argument that this is worse than the Deoxys decks before the Deoxys nerfs, it is, it, it is so far wrong that it's not even worth discussing. You're just wrong. Because there are counterplays to Ultra V6 there were no counterplays to Deoxys when it was first released. But what this is leading me into is my problem, and, it, and this is just my personal problem, this isn't a problem with the game, this is my personal problem, is that if I build a deck that can withstand and counter Ultra Beast decks, it gets destroyed by Rush decks. So if I try to build a deck that can withstand the Rush, it gets destroyed by Ultra Beast decks. And there's, I can't think of a deck out there that really survives against everything. And I, this game trolls me to no end, and I know it trolls a lot of people, so I'm not saying that it is singling me out. But if I run a deck that, if I go up against Rush deck after Rush decks, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put in a deck that can, that can hold up better against a Rush deck. 100% guaranteed I'm going to get an Ultra Beast deck on the next game. I kind of equate it to playing Paper, Rock, Scissors with only Rock and Scissors. And then your opponent has Paper as one of their options. And so you're like, yeah, I have a chance to win, but my odds are greatly reduced of winning because I can't counter Paper. And so what I've done is like, I'm throwing things at the wall right now and seeing what sticks. I have, for full disclosure, I have, in my dailies the last two days, I have four total wins, which means I have eight losses, and three of my four wins have come against Bugbot. And it is every bit as bad as that sounds. So what I've got here is this deck that I threw together. It's got Yvetel, and you're probably saying, why in the world are you running Yvetel? And it is quite simply because of Rodham and Gengar Mega Gengar. And Sableye is a really good figure, but it is also in there because it's a dark type to, again, stop Rodham and Mega Gengar from just moving all over the board at will. 
I have Sogaleo in there because it's gonna allow me to attack figures and not have Zoro switched in. Also, even if it loses the roll, there's a good chance that it's gonna send the opponent back to the PC, which is gonna open up an entry point most likely for me. Altaria is going to buff my Yvettel, my Noibat, my Noivern, and my Gyarados. Gyarados is in there for the purple attack of Storm. I actually think Storm is a really nice move in this meta. It's two star purple. It has the ability to clear off your entry point. And, you know, if, if, if your opponent's running a rush deck, your entry point is taken, you put your Gyarados on that inner square, and then your opponent brings his other three MP figure down up against it. One storm can clear out both of those. It is actually very useful. The Altaria makes the, the 109 that I have a 19, no wait, a 120, a 119 that I have a 129, which is nice. I am running Sharp Beak with it to get it up to like 149. And then Noibat is relatively easy to evolve into Noivern. Noivern has arguably the best purple in the game. You know, you can make a case for evolved the Lazikin having a better purple, and I'm not really gonna argue that point with you. But that is the concept behind this deck. Now I will tell you, it has not worked. <laughs> maybe, um, I don't know, maybe using Zoro, I believe Zoro is a dark type, instead of Sableye would be better. Although I like Sableye's mobility. So I don't know, like I said, I am flat out throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks at this point. And so far, nothing has stuck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this into league play and we're gonna go up against Ken, who's running an I don't know what deck. It's not a rush. It's got a banish element. There are so many different decks and it is, I think rush decks are run a lot more than Ultra Beast because rush decks are quite simply a lot cheaper to, to create than an Ultra Beast deck is. I'm, um, I'm actually gonna open up with my Leo on the back row. The one thing I do have to pay special attention to is I cannot put my, um, I cannot put my Magikarp up against the Nala. Quite simply, anywhere but there. Um, matching up against Mimikyu is not going to be a wise idea either, because if Mimikyu curses it, and that is a level 10 Mimikyu, then, um, then uh, I, I, got, I got nothing. So I'm going to bring out my Yabettle. Um, most likely, well, you can't take my entry point because I have long throw. So I'm not sure what my opponent's going to do. Okay. Which means I'm going to take my Magikarp up the other lane. Gyarados versus Mew is a terrible matchup. So, um, I'm actually just going to move him up one more. Alright, that, that's great. I'm completely okay with that. That's going to trigger my evolution. Happy to take it. And uh, he's going to get his Beware, which I guess that's a pretty easy, even trade for me. Uh, I'm happy with it. I'm now going to cover up my goal. My opponent, double chance, switch, long throw, goal block. And save the oh, Mega Save Light. Okay. Interesting. And um I actually think I'm gonna X speed here just on the off chance that I do roll white into purple. Now he'll probably switch, which is actually better for me because there's a lot more white on that wheel for me to whirlwind across. I'm okay with that. Um, 
it was kind of a wasted plate, although I think it was a, it, the plate was provided protection. He may not have swapped out had I not used the X speed, but he probably wanted to protect his Mimikyu. That was a horrible decision by my opponent. Um, that was just pretty bad. <laughs> because 128 and 19 covers, no matter what his is, I was going to be doing more than 140 damage. So that was a pretty bad move on my opponent's part there. And, uh, good. So he's now going to attack my Altaria. We are going to get burned here. I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to press up one here, which is going to force him to make a decision on what he wants to do. He should just move Zoro over. That was quite interesting. But I will take the free surround and then not attack into Zoro. That's not really a good matchup for me. Um, pretty interesting decision made on that point. So Mega Sableye can come out. You can't knock out Sableye. Like, it, it just doesn't get knocked out. Um, as long as we don't get knocked out, and we don't, which is perfect, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to threaten game, which means he's going to have to either gold block with Mega Sableye or lose his Mega Sableye, and then I'm going to surround Beware and get that figure off the board. And that works out really nicely for me. Again, not going to attack there, although um, that would not have been a horrible attack. We'll go up and take over the other entry point. He doesn't have Max Revive. I can replace my Noi Bat or Noi Burn should the need arise. I'm actually going to win that roll. And that's going to be the end of that. Um, I think we go here, because that's going to threaten game. It's going to force him to either move his Sableye or lose his Sableye. And I have Hurdle Jump, so he's going to lose his Sableye, which is nice for me. So we're going to take out the Sableye, and then, okay, but my opponent has Long Throw. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to back up with Sableye. So I couldn't take over his entry point because of long throw. But what I can do is I can set up Sableye to be a nuisance to his uh, figure. And I kind of want to do scoop up here, but I'm not going to. I'm actually just going to attack. He's going to have the option of swapping out for his Zoro, which he should do. I think that was the better play. The smarter play, anyways. And we rolled this. <laughs> and we rolled the natural one. Not even the... Not even the newly created one. Um, we are going to go ahead and back up. So there we go. That is good enough. Strike is going to be perfect. I still can't take over that entry point though because and we will just pop them down here. I 
I think this is actually a pretty decent play right there. Um, I do want to trigger my sharp beak on my next turn if, if Gyarados is still alive. And he's definitely going to be alive. Now looks like a good time to trigger that. going to do the long throw. So I'm going to do this. That is going to be the end of my Altaria. Oh, he chose not to do the surround, which I find very interesting. go. Because he doesn't have gold, Hurricane is going to be a fantastic move here. We don't get the Hurricane. He's not going to Shuttle Flip, so I'm not worried about that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up having to scoop up, which is fine. That works. Would have preferred to have the entry point, but um, definitely don't want to just let him have free reign over everything. Sableye is a really bad matchup for Gyarados. But my opponent doesn't want to. I think go ahead and take my hurdle jump here. This way, I'm going to attack Mew with Noi Burn. There's the hurricane that we were looking for. Um, I'm actually stronger than him. Yeah. Actually stronger than him. That should be victory. Because there's nothing stable I can do to knock me out. Well, unless I roll miss. So as soon as I say that that should be victory, watch me roll a miss. But it's like 96% of victory. Because he's going to have no gold to knock out my purple. Nothing else matters except for me rolling miss. And I don't roll the miss. So we are going to take home the victory. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for us, we didn't go up against a Rush deck, nor did we go up against an Ultra Beast deck. But uh, a win is a win. So we will definitely take it. And let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the deck? It's got a couple dark figures, some, some not often used figures. But, um, you know, it, it's thinking outside of the box and trying to get something to work. Let me know what you guys think. Are you having a problem with facing rush decks when trying to counter ultra beast and vice versa let me know in the comments below and until next time